So you excited to record tonight? Dude, I'm so pumped, man. Like, I'm, uh, I'm excited, excited and happy. And just, hey, fucking move out of the way, asshole. It's a funny story, actually. My, uh, my subway station has decided to just close uh, for an undisclosed amount of time. That said, I'm OK with it because I like driving better. Oh, yeah. driving in New York City is, you know what I mean? It's a defensive driving thing. Get in the bike lane, asshole! It's great though, you know, the city's, it's the best city in the world. How many fun? Yeah, just make your own lane. Yeah, oh, and be on your phone! And be on your phone! Are you beeping to me? Well, I mean, look at this, look at this! Sum in and slam on the brake. Perfect! <laughs> I just celebrated four years of marriage this week, actually. This is great. Come on, come on. Oh, yeah, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah. We've been uh, married four years. We've been dating, though, a total of 14 years, which is, I know, I had to make sure. And um, she's great. I mean, if I'm being honest, she's one of my favorite people right now. And... Um, <laughs> Here's the thing, when you tell people that you've been in a relationship that long, a lot of times from men, it's met with pity, which is unfortunate. You know, a lot of men will be like, ah, 14 years, Jesus Christ, the sex must have gotten so stale by now, right? And I'm like, no, sex hasn't gotten stale, it's gotten efficient, that's where we're at. You know, like our sex life is like a Billy Joel concert at this point, we are just, yeah. We're just fucking playing the hits, no new shit, everybody's happy, like that's how we're, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you're never gonna go to a Billy Joel concert. He's gonna be like, this is off my next... You're like, B -b 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 piano man, get to it right now, hurry. <laughs> know what you want, you know? It's great. And we don't have to do that thing that new couples have to do, which is like after sex, you gotta like build up each other's confidence, you know? We are well past that at this point. The last time my wife and I texted the first words out of her mouth when we got done, she just went, good stuff, and walked out of the room. So... So I'm no longer in a marriage, I'm just on a lacrosse team with my wife, that's what that is, just... Hey, good stuff out there, let's hit the shower. Yeah, she's great, she's a, she's a nervous person, which I feel bad for, because a lot of nights I'm doing stand-up, so she's home alone, because that makes her you know, more nervous. Something my wife will do every single time when I'm not home, before she goes to the bathroom, is she will punch the shower curtain. <laughs> in case there's a murderer on the other side of it. It's just a real thing. When she first told me that, I was like, oh, I just married a crazy person. Like, that's what I thought. But the more I say that on stage, the more women will look at me like, yeah, of course. Like, are you not punching it? Like, how would you, how would you know if there's an intruder afoot? What? I've had a woman after a show come up to me and she's like, that's what I do, uh, but I don't punch it. What I do is I just like rip it back really fast. <laughs> That's your whole plan? What are you talking about? That's, there's no step two? That's everything? That's A to Z? You just want to startle the murderer. That's what you're going to do. You just want to rip it back so you can be like, Jesus Christ! No. Well, I was going to kill you, but um, you got me. <laughs> now let's go get Froyo. You know, that's not, how, that's not how it works, you know? It's a weird thing when you've been in a relationship a while too. Like certain things change that I didn't expect. Like um, for instance, like I don't go uh, to barber shops anymore because I don't have enough dirty stories to warrant being in them. That's the way that it works. <laughs> Ladies, I'll break it down for you. Uh, most barber shops I've ever been into has just been men sharing very sexually explicit conquests. And a guy in a long relationship, I can't keep up with that, that's it. <laughs> Right, the last time I was in Queens, this Italian barbershop, it was going down the line, every single guy sharing a story. The guy next to me, his exact story was, the other night, I was banging this chick, she started puking, I didn't even stop. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> nope, no, I don't, what? Why would you say that out loud? <laughs> First off, I think that's assault. Like, you can't just admit that, you know? You might wanna take that to the grave with you, you know what I mean, but... Here's the thing, but everybody else in the barber shop was like, hey, hey Anthony! Yeah! And they were, they were happy for him, you know what I mean? Which is uncomfortable. So then they look at me like, kid, tell us the last time you had sex, so then I gotta make my sex story be on the same level as Anthony the Assaulter, you know? So I'm just trying to, 
I'm just trying to spice it up on the fly, but it's not as good. I'm like, all right, so, you know, the other night, the wife's giving me the eyes, so, you know, first things first, we just fucking, you know, lock the cats out of the bedroom. Uh, <laughs> weird when they stare and shit so we got them um, we got them um, out uh, one pussy in the bedroom that's the rule and then um, <laughs> but you know what comes next right you're goddamn right we just fucking hit those lights because of our crippling insecurities and then uh, I mean 15 minutes later we're back on the couch we're watching Dancing with the Stars it was a hell of a you know what I'm saying it was, uh, yeah. Yeah, they did not know what I was saying you guys they stopped <laughs> they stopped mid haircut so Good. Yeah. We, um, my wife and I, we have two cats, uh, which has never gotten an applause, even at a recording. Can you believe it? I mean, what are the odds? I mean, no, no. I don't need your pity. You can go to hell. I'm just saying, like, it's crazy, even in this atmosphere. Never once. Um, if I was like, I have two golden retrievers, you guys would have fucking carried me out of here. I mean, this guy, this guy with the chunky scarf is clapping because I said golden retriever. You know what I mean? I, dogs are better than cats, right? But we live in a tiny apartment, so we can't have uh, dogs. So I have these two cats, and I've had them since they were 10 weeks old, and they're now 10 years old, right? So they're great. I love these cats, right? Yeah, thank you for the cats. Uh, <laughs> And so here's what we do. My one cat, he just loves to just sit next to me and just watch some TV. That's his whole thing, right? So I started watching that show, Narcos, on Netflix. Are you guys familiar with this show, right? Yeah, it's, it's, great. it's a great show. It's significantly more reading than I signed up for, if I'm being honest, because, uh, you know, it's in Spanish, and I don't speak it. There's a lot of, like, you know, that whole fucking thing. And um, here's the thing. Before Narcos, my cat had never heard the Spanish language before, and I know you're like, why does that matter? He's a cat, whatever. This was his exact reaction. I put on Narcos. They start speaking Spanish. His ears caught it. And then he snapped his neck to the television and stared at it for a while. And then snapped his neck back to me as if to be like, that's what I understand. What the fuck have you been speaking to me this whole time? I knew every goddamn word of that. <laughs> so now I'm learning Spanish for my cats, you guys, because... I'm a good pet owner. I come home to the nines. I'm like, hola, Nemo. Como esta? Like, I bow. It's a, it's a cultural thing. I just didn't think. I was like, there's no way my cat would understand Spanish. I was like, my cat's black. Why would Spanish be the language? You know, I thought he was black. Apparently, this whole time, my cat's been Dominican. So that's why. <laughs> um, I drive a lot, uh, which is not good, because I have pretty bad road rage, you guys. <laughs> I'll give you an example. I was recently driving uh, on the highway and it was going from four lanes down to one lane in the middle of the day for construction because fuck everybody, I guess. That's what was... Where do we gotta go, you know? And uh, as it's all merging, there was one guy who's like, I'm just gonna drive down the shoulder and then cut all of the traffic and then jump to the front of the line. You know this piece of shit move, right? There's always... That guy always gets away with it, you know? But not on this day, my friends. Can I tell you? We all drove bumper to bumper, being like, nah, 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 fuck him, fuck him, fuck him. Like, we were this, this close. You could have held up pennies in between our cars, you guys. It was the most beautiful act of patriotism I had ever seen. Yeah. Because we came together as a country to defeat our enemy. How beautiful was that, you know? It was great. And then I got closer to the guy, and I saw him put down his window, and he started screaming at us. Which I was like, are you fucking kidding? So then I put down my window, because I love a conflict when I'm in a car. <laughs> face to face, different story, you know? But in a car, you can just be like, fuck you, and then just drive away. You know, it's, it's the best of both worlds. It's fight and it's flight, right? So I put down my window, and then I heard what the guy was screaming, and it completely changed my opinion of him, because this is word for word. What are you screaming? He was going, hey, so let me in! I gotta take a shit! <laughs> yeah. That's what he said, and I immediately let him in. You guys, I had to. <laughs> I would never wish that on my worst enemy. Have you ever been in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic? Diarrhea bubbling? Like, I got six minutes tops. Like, what the fuck am I gonna do? Like... Why are car seats shaped like toilets? I'm already in position. Like, this is so bad, you know? Like, so... <laughs> there was no way that guy could have explained what the problem was without embarrassing himself, you know what I mean? 
Which is why I think we should come up with a solution. Here's what I've been working on. You know how undercover cop cars, they have that little fucking siren that kind of just, just pop right on the hood? We should just make that, right? We should just make just a brown shit siren that you put right on your fucking hood. Would you not move out of the way if you saw that coming? I gotta be honest, I'd block an ambulance to get out of that guy's way. I would. Because an ambulance, like, they got medical professionals back there. It'll be okay. This guy, I'm like, he just had sushi from a gas station. Get him home now. Hurry. <laughs> He's gonna die. <laughs> this is good. I, uh, I don't bring a weapon in my car because I'd use it. I definitely... <laughs> I would use it. I won't even, like, here's the thing, too. This is where I know, like, if I had a weapon, I would have killed somebody. Uh, it's not even for a good reason. You know when you're at a red light, and then the second the light turns green, the person behind you honks without even giving it? Like, I'm like, that's it. That's the moment. That's where I would have been like, <laughs> that's it. I would have been like, well, thought I was having a good day, but I guess I'm going to jail for murder, you know? And you go back there and you, you beat him to death, you know? Clap if you guys have fired a gun in here before. <laughs> I think we're at a time in America where uh, we gotta have some gun control, right? This is getting crazy out there, right? Yeah, you agree? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and here's the reason that I think we need gun control. Uh, it's because I fired a gun for the first time recently, and I had the time of my life, you guys. It is... <laughs> That's why we gotta get rid of guns. They're just too goddamn fun. I mean, holy shit. I'm smiling just thinking about it, to be honest with you. There's only two people on the planet. There's people who love guns and people who haven't fired a gun yet. That's the way that works. The second that gun touched my hand, I was like, should I kill everybody? Like, I just thought that. It's like, listen, it's not a good thought, but it was back there, you know? And I didn't want to kill anybody, but if I'm being honest, it was nice to have the option, you know? Like, when do you, when do you get that? Hardly ever, you know? So it's fun. I don't know. Here's, here's my proposition for gun control. This is what I think we should do. Um, what if for a few years, as a social experiment, uh, we only gave guns to women? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of men opposed to that idea in the room. Which is fine. I get that. It's totally cool. Like, and it's funny, too, because every woman that I know personally is always like, we got to get the fucking guns out of here. Fuck the guns. Nobody should have guns. And then I'm like, what if only women have guns? They're like, we're listening. You know, it changes. <laughs> So suddenly, funny how that works, um, but I do think it would be interesting because I think, number one, uh, it would eliminate one of the big advantages that men have over women, which is physicality, right? Like, if only women have guns, now I'm afraid to walk home alone at night. That sounds terrifying, right? I can't, can't imagine what you ladies must go through. My God, you know? Also, catcallers, extinct in a week. They're fucking gone. That'd be... They're off the planet. They don't represent men. They're a subspecies of humans, so we can purge them from our society. The big drawback, of course, would be relationships, right? Those would no longer be a democracy, right? <laughs> Come on from a long day. I'm like, all right, honey, we're going to watch MTV. What are we watching tonight? She's like, Real Housewives Marathon. I'm like, fuck, again? And she just starts cleaning her gun like, what was that? I have to be like, I'm Team Bethany. Let's do this, you know? Play along, you know? We do, uh, well, oh, fuck it. Uh, <laughs> never mind. You know what? Continuity. Boom. Back on. <laughs> I, um, I don't know. It's weird. But we, we do live here in New York City, which I think is, is killing me uh, slowly. New York, it's the anxiety that just really ramps up. You know what I mean? Like New York City, it kind of just feels like, you know when you're in a line and then someone's standing too close to you in the line? You know what I mean? You have to do that thing where you're like, can you just fucking give it? Just... <laughs> Just a foot, but you're inside me. If you could just fucking get, you know, like that's what living in New York feels like every day. So I try, I was like, here's what we should, let's go to the beach, you know, let's unwind, relax at the beach. Except we made a big problem. We went to the closest beach to New York City, which is Rockaway Beach. Yeah, that is like, going to Rockaway Beach is like putting a towel down in Times Square. That's what that feels like. <laughs> Zero personal space whatsoever. I swear to God, this is what happened. I, we went there, my wife, we put down the umbrella and on the, the blanket, everything like that. I go into the ocean. She lays down, starts listening to a podcast, takes a nap. I come out of the ocean, and there is a man sitting in our umbrella shade. 
just chilling out underneath the umbrella. And first I like walked up. I was like, oh, that's not them. And then I came back and I, I saw my wife and I was like, oh, she's just moved on. That sucks. Like, you know, <laughs> there's no worse way to find out your wife has left you than when you're wet with seaweed and sand in your ass. You know what I mean? Like that's, I was like, okay, I'll just walk back into the ocean, you know? Um, but I walk up to this guy because I'm like, maybe he's mistaken, you know? So I just go, oh, s- excuse me. And then he just went, ah, yeah, it's hot. <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> you're, just, you're just part of our family now? Like, you know, get up, go, you know? It's a... But then he wouldn't move. He wouldn't move. So I was like, all right, if he's not going to move, I'll make him move by putting the umbrella over here, you know? And so... <laughs> I walked over and just ripped it out, right, like a man, you know, right out of the sand. And then I went over to this side, and then I couldn't get it back in the sand. You ever have that happen where just for some reason the wind suddenly picked up? And I just had to hold the umbrella for the rest of the time while the wind's blowing it. I just fully dislocated my shoulder, but it was worth it to not give that guy a goddamn ounce of my shade, you know? Some people throw shade. I take it. That's what I do. (laughs) Other people say, uh, you know, it's also a fun thing to do at the beach. Go go do water sports. You guys have jet skied before, I would imagine, right? Yeah. Here's here's the thing. Um, Jet skiing is the most fun you'll ever have in your entire life for six to eight seconds, I'd say. (laughs) Realistically speaking, I mean, the second you let it out, like, yeah, it's a great time. But then you hit that first wave and it just feels like you're getting into a series of car accidents. That's what... <laughs> that's the whole experience. Just, hey, 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 over and over again. My back, my whole body, I'm in full concussion protocol. <laughs> I got off the jet ski just noodle-legged and drooling, being like, what just happened? Where am I? You're like, I'll tell you what happened. You just paid $100 to get CTE, so have fun with that. I'm gonna wait for you because that's the right amount of laughter. Don't fucking hold it in. Are you crazy? <laughs> Fuck them. Are you out of your mind? You're the one. That's it. You're, you're the correct. Whoever laughs longest, that's the rule in comedy. Whoever's laughing the longest, they're right. Uh, <laughs> that's what that works. Um, they say uh, in New York City, if you can make it here, uh, you can make it anywhere. And that was written uh, for one group of people only, and that is uh, the blind. Because... <laughs> I mean, if you're blind and you can navigate that eight-mile obstacle course that's mostly stairs, like, you can fucking... Congratulations, you're a superhero. Like, I don't know how... I watched a blind guy make a subway transfer. Do you have any idea how impressive that was? There was already another train there. He just popped up and walked across the platform with more confidence than I've ever had in anything in my life. I was like, how did he know that was there? Unless he's using his other senses where he's like, oh, that smells like piss. That's the cue. Like, how did he... Uh, and he didn't have a dog either, which I also don't understand how those work. Um, it's been explained to me, but I'm too dumb to get it, I think. <laughs> They're like, here's how the dogs work. Uh, they learn very specific routes over months, sometimes years. And I'm like, okay, cool, I get that. But then how do I, as the blind guy, tell the dog which route I want to go on? <laughs> a- anybody? I mean, I don't know. I just, you can't just be like, bank, and then he just goes to the bank. Like, what? He's... He's a dog. Like, how would he, you know what I mean? So. I was talking about this in a comedy club. This actually, in this comedy club, and I'm not lying, there was a blind guy with a service dog in the crowd. He was in the very back of the room. Ironically, I didn't see him, but he was back there. And he said, he was like, hey man, like, I don't appreciate you uh, talking about service animals because my service dog cost me $60,000, right? I, that's, I was like, I don't know the going rate of a service dog, but like, 
that's a lot of goddamn money for a GPS. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Get an iPhone, man. Like, that's crazy. If you say bank to Siri, she will take you to the bank. She knows all the banks. Like, why wouldn't you, you know? For $60,000, I will be your seeing eye dog. I mean, that is, that's the most money I've ever heard of. That would be incredible. Are you kidding me? I'll be your friend. I'll talk to you in English. I'll try to explain the color yellow. Like, it'll be a good time. You know? <laughs> uh, I'm a petty person, for sure. Always out for revenge. Revenge and spite, both of those, actually. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I was, uh, I was getting into an elevator recently uh, with a stranger, which is, you know, it's not a big deal. I do it all the time. It's like a hobby. And so I, and also I love a good elevator ride. I'm not claustrophobic. Even if it crashes, I'm already in a casket. This is beautiful. You know, it's very, it's cost effective. And so I get in to the elevator with this stranger, right? And he stands on the side with the buttons. Very important job, okay? Then I get to the back of the elevator and then he pushes his floor and then doesn't ask me what floor I'm going to? These are the people we need to fucking catapult out of our society. I'm bringing back the human catapult. I don't know why we ever got rid of that, to be honest. That is, that should be the only death penalty that we have. That is fun for the whole family, isn't it? You can bring your kids, they don't see what happens on the way down, you know? Like, even the guy getting catapulted, I guarantee has to have a second where he's like, this is pretty sweet, you know? Like, it's... You're flying, you know? So he doesn't ask me. So I just try to like lean in and give him a hint. I go, oh, sorry about that. Um, six, please. I say the floor. And then this is what he does. Instead of pressing six for me, he looks at me, hears me say it. And then he just leaned his shoulders out of the way for me to get in there and do it. Like he fucking smooth criminaled backwards. <laughs> like a full, like, da, 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 like leaned back. So then I had this little room in between things. So I, first off, I'm a nice guy. I don't even think about it. I'm like, all right, I'll just like get in here. And then I went to press it and I was like, what am I doing? I went like that and just pressed all the buttons. <laughs> Fuck you, okay, that's it. <laughs> we go to all the floors now. That's, yeah, you're goddamn right. My day is done. This is my day. Is ruining yours because... If you're on the side with the buttons, man, you are the elevator DJ for that ride. That's it, you know? You gotta take requests. When I do it, I'm killing it. I'm like, this next floor goes out to Monica and they're counting. Like, I'm making a... It's a show, you know? Yeah. I have pretty good moderation with my drinking uh, except in one place and that is on an airplane um, because I don't know I don't know why it could be 6 a.m. 10 p.m. it's sky time I'm getting drunk like that's what <laughs> that's it I'm sorry the second that door closes I was like do you, I'll do a keg stand do you have one let's get this could be our last tango I am not going down sober like let's fucking get you know let's get into it and so I'm sitting down, right, and the, the flight attendant comes over to me, and she asked me, uh, and so I go, I'll take a vodka soda. That's what I said to her, right? First thing she did was she looked at her watch. I was like, you can fucking check that judgment right at the door. I don't need that bullshit. You high-altitude hussy. I will not... I will not be judged by somebody who wears a paper hat. Like, get the fuck out of here, you know? So... So she gives me the drink, and again, it's a, I'm on a six-hour flight. I'm, I'm going to have more than one, so I just tried to be nice to her, and I just go, oh, can I uh, open a tab? Which I thought was a normal sentence to say. <laughs> and this was her exact reaction. She goes, uh, sir, this is an airplane, not a bar. <laughs> like, she literally lemon squeezed, like, never bar. She did that with her face. <laughs> It made me so angry, you guys. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I must have got confused when you pushed a mobile bar up to my seat. <laughs> Frisbeed a napkin at me and said, what'll it be? You're a bartender. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> You're a bartender in the sky. You're a sky tender. Call it whatever the fuck you want, but that's, that's what you are, you know? <laughs> like, so... So here's the thing, I was gonna have two drinks on that flight, but instead I was petty and I had six, okay? <laughs> yeah, you're goddamn right. Oh yeah, yeah. 
I didn't make it easy for her either. I waited till she was done handing out all the fucking Terra Blue chips and all that. And then the second she would sit down in the back and take out her phone, I'd just press that call button immediately, you know? <laughs> that loud and that ping, it's so loud. It's the worst. I'd be like, Sky Tender, come out over here, you know? And here's the beautiful part. This was really amazing. She came over around like the fifth drink, had to keep closing out every time, right? So she hands me the credit card machine and she goes, uh, oh, I just want to let you know there's like a gratuity option on here. <laughs> yeah, in, in case you want to leave a tip. First off, I immediately returned my seat to its upright and locked position. <laughs> Took a moment and just was like, I'm sorry. This is an airplane, not a bar, so... <laughs> been a bartender, but you know, what are we going to do? This is great. <laughs> How do you think this is going so far? Is it all right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, you guys ever get so uh, drunk that you forgot how alcohol works, like at all? You know what I mean? When you get to that part, never. You ever get to that part? Like, here's the thing. I get to that part in the night where I'm so hammered that I'm like, now I could just have seven more shots of tequila because I couldn't possibly get any more drunk, right? Like that's, you know, you think that way, right? I had one of those nights uh, recently where I came home and I was, I was drunk, but I was like, I'm going to have a nightcap because, you know, it's never enough. And uh, I... <laughs> I go into my fridge, right? And then I'm, I reach in the back and I go to reach uh, for a beer, but instead I found uh, a pot edible in my fridge. And here's the thing about this edible. A normal marijuana edible could be anywhere from like five milligrams, like a hundred, it's like a lot, it's like on the high end, right? This was a 1,000 milligram edible. I'm not lying, they used to be legal in California. I bought one out there, took a bite of a corner and then just saw God for six weeks. So I was like, I'm never... <laughs> I'll, this is going to take the rest of my life to eat this. But then, again, now I'm drunk and I'm like, oh, the thousand milligrams, I can fight off the effects of this. This is, I'm drunk, you know? So I bit into it and I was like, oh, this is actually kind of delicious because it was a brownie. And then I just ate the rest of it. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I went to bed at like two in the morning drunk, you know? And then I woke up at 6 a.m. Uh, too high to sleep. That was what that was. <laughs> Like an adrenaline needle into my heart. I was like, ah! I just sat straight up. But I wasn't even in bed. I was just floating above it. You know what I mean? So I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom. Because here's the thing. I was like coming down from being drunk. So I'm like hungover and sweaty and stuff. But I'm like, I gotta get to the bathroom. But I didn't walk there. I just floated there like a cartoon character who smelt a pie. You know what I mean? Just fucking nose first. And I get to the bathroom, and here's like the embarrassing part is my body wouldn't let me pee. Because um, it was so unsure of reality in that moment. They're like, we don't know if you're awake or not, so you're gonna have to prove this, man, because we got defense mechanisms working here. So I'm like splashing water on my face. I'm like, I'm awake, I'm awake. And my body's like, okay, because you know, we've been burned before, so we had to make sure. Yeah. Then I started peeing. Turns out I was in bed the entire time. I was just pissing. Yeah. Yeah. It was not fun. Everybody. Yeah. My wife was pissed. We're all pissed. Pissed and wet and cold. And unhappy. <laughs> I'd like lie to myself for sure. And I'm like, oh, weed's like the better thing than alcohol because you don't get hangovers. But weed has its hang-ups as well. You know, it's not as good. Like I... Here's the thing, like after the show, like in theory, I would love if we all like went outside, right? And we just formed like a big smoke circle as a big group, right? Wouldn't that be fun? And then we just fucking <laughs> smoke some weed, learn about each other. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, uh, on paper, that would be great. But in reality, it would be a goddamn nightmare because <laughs> here's the thing. What happens when I'm in the smoke circle is I get too stoned too fast and then I forget that I'm in the conversation. That's what happens. 100% of the time, I just start watching it like a tennis match. I'm like, oh my God, you're all making terrific points, you know? <laughs> like, oh, this is great. I'm so happy, you know? And then at some point, someone will be like, Mike, what do you think? And I'm like, you could see me? Like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. Like, this is, this is crazy. I thought I was home. <laughs> oh. 
I also had a uh, traumatic experience happen, uh, which did kind of make me gun shy about weed. I was uh, I was walking down the city and I was smoking weed alone. You know, don't want to brag, but I was um, <laughs> I was smoking weed outside of a building that a police raid was about to happen to, which. Didn't know that at the time, just the luck of the Irish, I suppose, because I start smoking instantly. 12 police cars screech up. I'm stoned, so the first thing in my head, I'm like, they're here for me. You know, like I immediately, my shoulders touch, you know, and then they come out in waves. There's like an assault rifle team, there were dogs, there was a guy with a battering ram making direct eye contact coming towards me. I was like, I gotta do something here, you know? I was like, I can either just put the weed away, right? Like, super cash, you know? Um, or I could do what I did, which was have a complete breakdown. That's what I thought <laughs> might be better. I was like, I get it! And I like, laid on the ground like a goddamn starfish. You guys just come... <laughs> I was so stoned and scared, I was admitting to crimes I didn't commit. That's how bad... At one point, I was like, I stole from the church. Like, I just said that, but I don't... I don't go to church, but obviously they weren't there for me. They're like, out of the way, miss! And then went to where they had to go. <laughs> those things where I'm like, I know that's funny, but like every time an audience laughs, it kind of hurts. You know what I'm saying? I guess. <laughs> it's just the truth. I, um, I'd never seen a police raid like up close and personal like that, which was wild to see. And I gotta be honest, I don't know how you get this job, but the battering ram job, that's the job. That's it. I don't know. I mean, that guy's job stops at the door. That's incredible. Like I... Here's the thing now, I watched this whole thing unfold and I could tell this guy, like he probably had limited responsibilities so he tried to elevate his status so he was trying to be like the quarterback of everything. Like, you know, like he took the goddamn battering ram and he's like, all right, you guys ready? You ready? Let's do this. Ah, get in there, go! I'll be in the car. And then kind of just walked away. <laughs> I swear to God, I heard gunshots going off. He's just in his car. He's like, Candy Crush. This is amazing. I can't believe it. It's nuts. <laughs> I don't know. And for some reason, a couple times a year in New York City, they'll get like a, they'll get like a tip on like a drug kingpin, you know, and then they'll go to go into the apartment, but then they'll get like the wrong address. It'll be off by like one letter or something. So they'll just burst into somebody's apartment and it'll be like an old lady crocheting shit or something. And then she'll just have a heart attack and die. And then they're like, sorry about that. You know, and they just... But I, for some, it's always an old lady, I don't know why, but even if it wasn't, if it was me, I would die in that situation. There's no way my heart would just, just pop immediately. If 15 people in riot gear just explode through my door, I'll do whatever the fuck you want me to do. They don't need to have guns, they don't even need to be police. If they were you guys, as an audience, and you ran at me full force and you were like, suck the stick, suck the stick, and they're like, why, why? You know what I mean, like that? That dick would be in my mouth so fast. You got, I mean... <laughs> Listen, don't judge me. I'd have questions, you know what I mean? Like, I, I would definitely have questions, but I'm gonna do it, you know, because what's going on? There's so many of you. I'm just gonna fucking suck the dick first and ask questions later. You know, that's how, that's how I survive. You know, you gotta be adaptable. Um, I, uh, I, I was telling you about me on that airplane before. Here's the other thing, too. In addition to drinking on planes, what I like to do, if I'm being honest, is to show up to the airport a little stoned. You know, that way I don't think about, like, you know, that whole thing. Uh, gets my mind off it, you know? So I'll smoke weed before I leave for the airport, obviously, forgetting how much stress is involved in airport travel, you know? You don't just get out of the Uber and you're like, I'm on the plane. You're like, that's the way. The last time I got so stoned, I didn't even make it into the airport. That's how bad it got. <laughs> like I, so I take, I take an Uber to JFK and then I got out of the plane and I'm very stoned, right? And here's the thing, JFK had completely changed their revolving doors, which I know it doesn't sound like a big deal, <laughs> but it was. You got, I'm not, we all grew up with the same revolving doors. They're tiny, you go in, you push them, they move, that's it, that's how it was. These are complete, they're like industrial sized, <laughs> giant, they look like three big pizza slices, essentially. <laughs> and now you can't push them anymore. They're automatic and they stop every two inches in case you're slow or new to walking or whatever the fuck, so. 
So I am maximum strength stoned, and I get into this thing. It closes me in. I'm in my little triangle apartment, having a good time, you know? And the second I'm closed in, I just go, oh my God, I don't have my phone on me. I was like, oh no. And then I turn around and look at the Uber, and the Uber driver is speeding away. So now I'm like, oh my, I gotta get through this Ravi door faster, but I can't, because it keeps fucking stopping, you guys, every two inches. So I have my bag, so I'm just trying to like stutter step towards it. I look like a crazy person. I'm like, come on, come on, he's doing this. I get out of the revolving door and I threw my bags down, turned around, ran towards the Uber driver, screaming, which, if I'm being honest with you guys, caused a bit of a stir at the airport. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. You can't just throw your bags down and, be, and run the other way. <laughs> yeah. Because that's terrorism, so you can't what they've taught us so I but I don't even think about it every police officer immediately just grabs their holster I'm not even paying attention I'm still chasing down this Uber and I did track in high school so I have perfect form and as I'm chasing this Uber down my hand grazes my back pocket where my phone is comfortably resting you guys the entire time I was just so stoned I forgot I had pockets that's what happened there which was the worst, because then I had to go back and pick up my bags in a full flop sweat. Everybody else is like still on edge, and I'm like, ha, 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 sorry about that, I'm on drugs. Delta? You know, you can't. Great. Um, yeah, weed's cool. I've, uh, I've also done this, too. I've done uh, mushrooms before. That was an interesting... Yeah, okay. Just you and me, pal. I appreciate that. She actually moved away from you when you said that, which makes me question your relationship. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I've done them. Did you do them with, with her? No. No. See... The first, I was like, I, someone told me, they're like, you got to do them with somebody you trust. That's what I've always heard, right? So I tried to do them with my wife because... Who could I trust more than her? You know what I mean? That would be great. So I was like, this will be great. We'll ascend to a higher plane as a couple. That'd be incredible, right? So I get the mushrooms and I'm like, all right, we'll take them on three. Ready? One, two, three. And then I swallow my mushroom. And then I look up and she is still holding her mushroom. She's like, I don't want to do this anymore. I was like, what? No, no, I mean, you gotta, you know, it's not a big deal. I'll just, I love you, I'll be here for you. Just go ahead and take that mushroom. And she's like, no, seriously, I, I changed my mind. I'm not doing it. I was like, yeah, but here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> it's already happening to me, so I need you to be with me. So just go ahead and fucking take the drugs, you know? <laughs> you, know? you know, you scream at your wife to take drugs. And so <laughs> she didn't do it, you guys. I guess she's got willpower. So I... Just had to sit next to her for the next four hours pretending I wasn't spiraling out of control because a husband in me so wanted to like win the argument, you know what I mean? But it's, it's written all over my face. I'm not having a good time. She's like, how you doing, Mike? I'm like, I'm good, I'm good, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, if I look like this, it's just because like the walls are breathing, but uh, you know, <laughs> you're missing out, woo! You know, it's, it's not fun. Most fun I ever had, I did mushrooms uh, one time in college and just started playing Mario Kart for Nintendo 64 for hours. And that was the shit. I gotta tell ya, <laughs> that's the best. I mean, you guys, here's the thing, when the level, like when I was peaking, the level that I was playing was a level called Rainbow Road, which is a trans, <laughs> like the slow nod for me. <laughs> He's like, mm-hmm, I am. Um... <laughs> if you're not familiar, uh, Rainbow Road is a transparent rainbow highway that's in space. So just picture that on psychedelic mushrooms. There's literally neon mushrooms in the sky as constellations. That's part of the game. And then around the last turn, your grandmother's winking at you. It's a fucking trip, man. I gotta die. <laughs> so I'm playing this game and I was good at it. I was good at it when I was a kid, but on mushrooms, I was a thousand times better. I was one with the game. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, I'm leaning into the turns with the MJ tongue out for concentration, like, ah, you know, that whole thing. Just killing it. And then I looked down to see how my fingers were corresponding. I'll never forget it, because on the screen it just said, uh, press start to play. (laughs) 
So I wasn't playing the game uh, at all. I was just watching the intro video on a loop. 100% sure I was in the race of my life. You guys look down to see what was going wrong. I was just mashing a Pop-Tart in my hand. I was super fucked up. That's what I was. Yeah. No, man. This is cool, though. This is great. I love when people come out to comedy shows for comedy. You know what I mean? It sounds like a crazy thing, but you'd be surprised how often people are just tricked into, you know, <laughs> tricked into listening to dreams. Um, <laughs> it's not fun. Uh, oh. I did a show uh, recently in, uh, in, in Potsdam, New York, which is like the top of New York State, right below Canada, right? Nothing going on. And I did this show with this comedian, and we were coming back from the gig, and we're on this backcountry road, and I didn't know where we were. The GPS wasn't working because the internet hasn't even like reached that part of New York yet. You know, it's just like an armpit. You know, whatever. So I am. So I guess I was going five miles an hour over the speed limit. Five, five miles an hour. A police officer passed me. You turned, pulls me over. He comes out of the car, slams the door, flashlight directly in my face. First words out of his mouth. What the fuck are you doing speeding in my town? <laughs> it's not what you want, you know? <laughs> it's not, a, not an ideal beginning, you know? You at least want like a good evening, something first, right? So I immediately start panicking. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know we were just two comedians coming from a show. The second I said we were comedians, this dude lit up like a goddamn Christmas tree, you guys. <laughs> so he just goes, comedians, what? Listen, everybody down at the station said that I always should have been a comedian. And, uh, <laughs> This is, this is crazy. Okay, okay. He's like blushing, you know? So now I start playing into it because I want to get out of a ticket. So I'm like, oh, why don't you start? It's never too late. Look at Rodney Dangerfield. He's like, come on, I don't know. I don't know. I got a wife and a kid. I could, but no, 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 no. He's like, I'm just going to go and I'm going to run uh, your license. You don't have anything on your record, do you? And I go, no, my record's clean. He goes, great, I'll be right back. Oh my God. And then he goes back to his car. <laughs> My buddy and I high five because I'm like, you know, we got out of that ticket, right? And then he sat behind us for 25 minutes, which is, you've been pulled over. That is um, simply too long for them to be back there. So now I'm starting to freak out again. He comes back out of the car, 25 minutes later, original personality. Everything from the slam, flashlight back in my face. Now he's holding my license and he goes, Michael, can you confirm the month and date of your birth? I go, yeah, sure, it's uh, December 10th. And he goes, December 10th? And you know when a police officer says the thing that you just said back to you and you just lose all confidence in your answers? <laughs> That's what happened to me. I was like, I don't know, it could be July 19th. Who knows? I thought that was, I thought that was my birthday, but I've never been sure of anything less. So I um, would love to change it to whatever you think the answer is, sir. Can I call a friend? I don't know. I'm panicking. And, and he's like, well, I'm asking you this because you have a failure to appear in court for another speeding ticket you got. So why don't you tell us about that? And I was like, oh, I, I don't know. This is the first time I'm hearing about it. He goes, really? Really? You know nothing about that? Really? And I go, no, I swear to God. He's like, you're telling me that the fucking computer is lying to me? Like, he starts screaming at me. I turn into Kermit the Frog. I'm like, ah! My arms are shaking. I'm all, I'm wiggling. I don't know what I'm doing. He's like, really? You know nothing about that? It's because I'm messing with you. Have a good night. And then hands me back. <laughs> hands me back my license. I swear to God, follows that up with, told you I should have been a comedian. And then just back to his car. I was like, you can't fucking do that, dude, okay? Like, first off, I was one really away from me, like, yep, you're right, I did it. I killed that family. I'm so sorry. I just throw myself at the mercy of the court, you know? Like, I didn't know what to do, right? But also, my friend who was in the car with me was like, I was so sure that you were about to get arrested that I was about to just run out of the car. <laughs> Imagine if that played out a couple minutes more. He just ran out of the car. The cop chased him. I chased the cop. We both get shot and killed. They have to fill out a report, and they're like, what the fuck? here he has to be like comedians can't take jokes you know? this is lovely I would um, I would like to uh, protect my wife more but uh, this body so nope won't happen it's uh this is not like a you're safe with me, babe, kind of a body. I get that, you know? It's a lot more of like a carry me to bed kind of a body. It is, it's delicate. And um, so, I don't, 
possess enough of those traits as like a husband, I feel like, to be a good one. You know, like, like ladies, I can't build your house or fix your car, your electricity, your plumbing. I can't do any of those things. Um, here's what I can do. I can listen to you, okay? Three, three or four women? Cool, that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's, good. that's usually about the average, you know? Every woman likes when you listen until you can't change oil. Then all of a sudden it's a fucking problem, you know? And that's what I, the way I grew up. My mother was like, when you grow up, like the women like when you're sensitive, they like when you listen. So then I became that person. And then all of you women collectively were like, we overcorrected, actually. That's, uh, <laughs> no. That's not what we meant at all, you know? Like, we said sensitive, we just meant like, don't hit us. Like, that's what we were going for. It's a different, it's a different thing, you know? I was like, all right, I'm going to start, you know, maybe I'll do a little more. I'll go to the gym a little bit more. But here's a problem. I do the same mistake that we all make, right, which is I set my goals way too high, you know? Like every time January 1st comes, I'm like, this is it. This is the year. I'm getting a six-pack, okay? And here's the thing. I'm not getting a (laughs) six-pack. And none of you are either. I mean, that's just... Let's just be honest. There are nine people on the planet right now with six-pack. Seven of them are Ryan Reynolds. It's not going to fucking happen. Like, just... What are we doing? What are we doing to ourselves? Who wants to live like that? Let's just set them way lower. Like, my goal this year is just to get my biceps bigger than my ankles. That's it. It's just a fucking... (laughs) Obtainable. You get it? Like, just... So here's what I decided to do. I decided to sign up uh, for this gym that my, that my buddy went to. And he's like, I'm a pers- he used to be a personal trainer and a professional bodybuilder. So he's like, just come to the gym that I go to and you'll get ripped. I was like, hell yeah. I hadn't gone to the gym in 11 months. So I was like already, you know, already weak person as it is. But we start doing a warm-up circuit, which is just me dry heaving, trying not to puke. <laughs> 30 minutes just going like these and these. And all of a sudden, my arms are just noodles. That's it. There's just, just absolutely. Like touch your face in that moment. I would, like, the only way. Just inertia is the only use of my arms. So bad, you know. So I tap out after like 30 minutes during the warm-ups. I'm like, I gotta go home. Like I, I thought I was dying. I was like, I gotta get my affairs in order. You know what I mean? Like I didn't. <laughs> so I tap out, and my buddy is like, before you leave you got to do pull-ups. And here's the thing about this pull-up bar. It was in the middle of the gym. So, like, everybody can see you. For some reason, it's a rite of passage at the gym. And my buddy is, like, a big, loud, boisterous kind of a guy. So he's like, here's what's going to happen, Mike. You're going to say a goal. You're going to visualize it. And then you're going to crush that goal right now. So tell us all, what is your goal? And I was like, survive. You know, like, I didn't didn't have a number in mind. And, um... But then he wanted one, and I don't know why. He got me all juiced up, so I was like, all right, I got, I got 10 in me, which is, yeah, you laughed at me. That is, uh, that is simply too many pull-ups, you guys. I don't know, that is way too many. I'm not talking like, nah, nah. I'm talking like, ha, ha, whatever that shit is. Like, who the fuck, fuck off, all right? And there's nobody. If you're gonna do 10, you come after the show, you tell me what Hall of Fame you're in, you know? So, but for some reason, he got me all juiced up, so I'm like, all right, just tell, I'm gonna do these 10 pull-ups, I'm gonna bang them out and go home. I jump up on this bar, I'm like, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Nothing like somebody else's arms are on my torso, right? So now my buddy's trying to motivate me. He's like, "Come on, Mike, you gotta want it." And I'm like, "Nah!" Just yelling, which that does not help you do more pull-ups, you guys. That just makes everybody at the gym stop what they're doing and focus on you. <laughs> Not doing any pull-ups, you know? So now I'm just hanging there like a poster of a cat waiting for the weekend. And, uh... <laughs> if you get it, it's fun. If you get it, it's fun, for sure. So I'm hanging there, and my buddy's like, come on, man, like, you gotta do one. <laughs> like, he's embarrassed for me now, you know? I was like, you know what? It's mine over matter for sure. I can do one pull-up, right? So I'm, I'm holding onto this bar, no lie, 25, 30 seconds, and then slowly, you guys, I start to rise, and then just as I start getting close, one of my arms starts going down. And then I'll, like, fight to get it back, and the other one's going down, and I can't stop shaking. I'm sweating more than I've ever sweat in my life. I get my chin over the bar, and a tear is coming down my face, you know? 
and I hold it because I don't want to be back up here. You know what I mean? So, I'm just holding it, and I look down in my moment of triumph, and my body is just holding. <laughs> He's like, you want to come down now, Mike? <laughs> Before I could say anything, someone's like, excuse me, miss, are you done on the polo bar? It was a fucking, it was a nightmare. You guys, thank you very much for coming to the album. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, keep it going for Brendan Zagalow, would ya? One more time for Mike Feeney, everybody.